So good morning to Amanda. And uh, Amanda, thank you for being uh, my first, and this is going to run every two weeks now, my first live on socials with, actually. Amanda, do you want to just, you know, just, you know, share a bit about yourself for everybody that's watching? I will, of course. And thank you so much, Paula. Uh, my name is Amanda Grace. I'm a life coach. And I help women stop screwing themselves over so that they can confidently and consistently show up as your best self. How I do that is I teach you how to journal and turn journaling into a superpower. It will be your secret weapon throughout life. And to teach people um, journaling as a practice that can really help them connect to themselves in ways that, that help you see yourself differently, which is everything in the world. How, how, who you are being is everything and how you see yourself is everything. So journaling helps you do that. So I just, this was my attempt at bringing it to the masses and making it easy. Getting to know myself, recovering my sense of self, take, learning how to love my, love being me and love taking care of me has profoundly changed my life. And journaling is the tool that has walked me there every step of the way it's like my magic looking glass your passion shines through when you're when you're teaching this throughout all of your boot camps now I know that you know when I invited you on you know you mentioned that you wanted to kind of almost give a small offering in terms of what can come up and it's all going to be about helping them to make decisions by using journaling so let me begin by making a statement and that statement is that there is you and in between you and the life you would love is a decision. It's a really courageous decision. And obviously, it's not just one decision. But between you and everything great in your life stands a decision. That is a truth. And that's why this is important. So I just want to offer that upfront in terms of why you want to learn how to make a decision that you can be proud of, that you can be confident in and courageous about, not because it's the right decision, not because it's the perfect de decision, but because it is a decision. What people tend to do, and I include myself in this because I have definitely, and still you find yourself doing it every single day, you find yourself procrastinating on decision making not making decisions in the moment because generally a, a variety of reasons. One of the reasons might be, you know, you don't want to rule out other options. You know, you're always kind of keeping your options open. Because there's one... always that fear, isn't there? That, oh my God, if I do that, then I'm going to be locked into this. Exactly. If I say yes to this, what am I going to say no to? And nobody wants to say no, right? And people don't like being said no to. You want to get very, very clear about what you are saying yes to or what you are saying no to. There's a scene in Castaway with Tom Hanks. He's standing at a crossroads. You know, his identity, who he used to be is gone now. And so he's at a crossroad. There's a decision to be made. But which way is he going to go? We agonize over the crossroads. We, we just are so focused on which way should I go? And what we really need to be focused on in that moment is naming each of the roads. So I call that clarity at the crossroads. One of my biggest decisions in life was um, deciding after two pregnancy losses to no longer pursue motherhood I thought what I was choosing between was having children, not having children. When you are confused and there's ambiguity present, there's a saying from Carla McLaren, a language of emotions. She says, intention ends all ambiguity. So when I was straddling that crossroads and I was wondering which direction to take, am I going to be a mother? Or am I not going to be a mother? I asked what my intentions were. What needs would I have been meeting that would have been served, or I believe would have been served by this strategy or role of motherhood. And once I got clear on that, I realized that really what it was about, witness to and involved in the growth and development of another human being. I wanted that intimacy. I wanted that connection to help a person shape themselves, learn to experience highs and lows of a person's journey. Once I got very specific about what actually I wanted to experience through motherhood, I realized, oh my God, I can scratch all of those itches through my work. And it was I wasn't attached to motherhood being the vehicle to meet those needs. 
that's what I mean by clarity at the crossroads. Another thing that you have to um, embrace when you are making decisions is you have to embrace what it means to be vulnerable. It's normal to be afraid when you do something new. If you are trying to do something you've never done before, you're not going to feel confident before you do it. The confidence doesn't even come from the doing. The confidence also is a decision. Like you don't feel confident before you take the action and the confidence is not going to come about because of the action. The action comes about because of a decision made to feel confident to take action on a decision that you've made in a state of confidence. It really is a matter of mindset. The trick with confidence is to practice it and decision-making is to practice it in small ways. And then you get small wins. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a very, um, a very small win type example. There was a time in my life where if I stayed over in your house, Paula, and you said to me, what would you like for breakfast? Would you like a, a boiled egg or would you like a fried egg? I'd be like, I don't know, whatever you, whatever you take. But I could not make a decision. So I was constantly not making decisions and deferring to what was most convenient to you because I had no confidence or practice in making a decision and sitting in that decision. So here's how it still plays out for me, interestingly, every time I get my nails painted. I love getting my nails done. It's one of my things. Every single time I'm in there, I'm faced with this kind of remnant of indecision because of the color choices. And every single time I have this whole like, um, oh, will, will I do something different? Will I do something different this time? Or will I just stick with what I know? This is my this is my default color, right? This I've been getting this color since, I don't know, for years and years and years. But every now and again, I'll break out and I'll get a new color. They're small decisions. And I want you to, when you're making small steak decisions, like what color will I do my nails? Uh, what will I have for breakfast? All of that. Pay attention to what goes on inside of you, what kind of thought process is happening behind it so that you can kind of learn where your hiccups are. And all it is, is a decision to stop agonizing and make a choice and own it, own that color. Like the last time I was in, um, got my nails done, I picked a color that on the uh, dummy nail looked amazing. But when it went on my nails, it looked quite neon. And so my very first thought was, OK, well, I won't be picking that color again. No, thanks. <laughs> But I, I decided to rock it. And interestingly, I got more compliments on that nail polish, probably because it was neon. But I, I got more compliments on that nail polish than I did on, on this that I ever than I ever do on this color. And it kind of gave me a new kind of like, how do I put it? It was like I got to enjoy that decision in the end because I didn't change my mind. I stayed with it. I could have changed my mind when she had two nails painted. But I stayed with my decision. Now you don't have to stay Isn't with Isn't that decision. interesting, eh? Isn't that interesting? And it's, yeah, it's then knowing it's a short-term thing and accepting that, isn't it? So... It's literally yeah. just nail varnish and you get to do it again, right? So this yes. isn't the one and only time that you get to paint your nails. A decision is not terminal. You get to change your mind at some other point. So when you are making a decision today about the color of your nails, you get to change that decision another time in your life. I have a student one time, she told me, I love this sentence, stop trying to ride two horses with one ass. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen, like I keep changing my Instagram handle because I'm like, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's it. <laughs> no, I finally landed on it. But I, every now and every couple of weeks, I'm like, sorry, sorry. Hi, everyone. I've changed my Instagram handle again. <laughs> And last night, I changed it for the last time. It's now Amanda Grace Coach. But last night, I was like, oh, God, if I change this again now. I, I heard the voice going, people are going to just think you're a flake. And then I was like, so what? And, and then I owned it by putting up a post that said, I've changed my handle again. Not, it's part of the process as I navigate my second adolescence. I love oh, that post. <laughs> yeah, I owned it and I brought in some humor as in like, I'm not going to be ashamed of my decision. I'm going to, I am not afraid to grow out loud. That's a, I think that's one of my strengths. I'm not afraid to learn on the job. I'm not, I'm not afraid to show you. And I, in fact, I think it's really, really important. And it has been in my way of teaching as an artist this whole time. And as a teacher, I want you to see me learning on the job. I want you to well, see yeah. 
me, I'm a human being figuring shit out in the moment. I do not know anything that is a secret thing to know. I used to think that people were sent to earth with a manual and I was just fucking missing on the day that it was handed out. There is no manual. Here's a very quick thing to do, right? I want you to write down on a piece of paper what you are trying to decide on today. And that might be Will I have um, super salad for lunch? Uh, no, you can, you can obviously write down anything. It might also be, will I change my car? Will I cut my hair? But try not to make it, will I leave my marriage? You know, that kind of way. But do something low stakes. But the hair one is good. Will I cut my hair? Will I dye my hair? Write it down on a piece of paper. And then write your fears down first. You need to vomit all your fears out. You need to give them a voice. You have to let that voice in you that's like, but people will think. You have to be like, yeah, I know, I know that's there. So in terms of Creative Freedom Bootcamp, on day one, I teach you how to facilitate the mind vomit and to make space in your life for all the lunatics in your head, the peanut gallery, to all have their say without it knocking you off, without well, basically without you traumatizing yourself, because that's what happens. If we're afraid, if we speak the fear that it's going to destroy us. So day one, Creative Freedom Bootcamp, I teach you how to speak your fear, speak your criticism, all of the things, be with the peanut gallery. So first of all, that is it. Let the peanut gallery have their say. What worries you? What are you afraid of? Now, allow yourself to feel the pain of all of that anticipatory loss, all of that worry, all of that vulnerability. Okay. So, and know that it is normal for this vulnerability to hear. Nobody makes a decision without vulnerability and confidence is not the absence of vulnerability when you write down all of that stuff what you're going to do is you're going to now ask yourself okay now what am I not acknowledging what is the other side of this story that I'm not taking into account like what if it does work like what if I cut my hair and it's fabulous what, what like what if it's just fucking fun like what if my neon nail color doesn't actually fit in at all with anything I wear but what if it's just fun and it strikes up a few interesting conversations over Ooh. the next few weeks um account for all the things that could go right all the ways in which it could be wonderful and give your brain equal airtime because your brain is skewed evolutionarily to predict all that could go wrong so that it can stay in control. Yeah, you have to allow yourself to uh, allow your brain to imagine what could happen once you get to the other side of that decision that might be a surprise. And you owe it to yourself to have both sides of the of that conversation. So just because you're scared doesn't mean you don't want to make the decision that is scary to make. It just means that your mind is confused. And remember that intention ends all ambiguity. So always ask yourself, what is my intention? Like, what do I really want here? What itch am I trying to scratch? What need am I trying to meet? And when you list them all out, you might find that the scarier decision, the more unpredictable decision is the one that's actually going to meet the most needs. And then you just decide, like, what are the non-negotiables? Because you might decide, you know what? This is the one, th this decision, although it's going to be scary, the need that is most important to me is over here. And that outweighs all of these negatives. And that when you do that in journal, yeah, when you do that in your, in your journal, what's happening is you're thinking outside of your head, you're thinking on paper. So you get to observe your mind on paper and that creates enough of a distance for you to see that this is a process happening within you and it is not you and if you're on creative freedom Bootcamp, i am going to give a lesson on this i just want to share this lovely message actually that we've had from one of your students actually that's joining us I you know, just... she said that she's still searching for the manual oh, aren't we all just I, 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 here's the good news um Jota, there, there is none. If you want to be and, you know, experience more of Amanda's great teachings, okay, uh, jump onto the last Creative Freedom Bootcamp. The details are on the ticker on the bottom of the screen here. Um, it's $37. It's and, amazing. Uh, and I'm bringing my A plus game. Like, I am so, like, pumped up for this. I'm not even going to limit myself in terms of what I give up, you know, what I deliver here well amazing so i'm really looking forward to the the last boot camp do you want to just share your social handle again for instagram so on instagram i am amanda grace coach and then creative freedom bootcamp.com is where you can register for the boot camp i hope to see you there yeah.
join us again there. So thank you so much. And yeah, you can now, I'm going to let you go now with everybody else in our thing. So thank you so much. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.